Yeah, so cricket is where we shift focus to on the sports match zone. West Indies women are gearing up to travel to Australia for a six-match white ball tour starting the 1st of October with the first T20 International. The tour will be the first assignment for the new head coach, the Australian Shane Dietz. Dietz, who has coached Bangladesh women, stepped down as the Netherlands women's coach to take up the West Indies job. And he says he's focused on enhancing the natural style of Windows women's cricket. To bring a cricket I really want to play is definitely the traditional West Indian Calypso style of play, attacking, taking it to the opposition and getting on the front foot. Um, it's why I've always coached cricket around the world and that's not going to change here. It's a style of play I think that's effective. So the players will be definitely getting the message that we're here to win and we're going to try to win by playing attacking, free-flowing cricket. Um, that's going to take a little bit of time to maybe adjust to or uh, a few skill sets, upgrades in players, etc. But we'll work towards that so they've got the ability to be able to play that style of cricket. Yeah, that was um, Dietz talking at the first press conference today. Here is a look at the full squad to tour Australia. These Windies women, Hayley Matthews captain, Shamine Campbell vice captain, Alia Aleen, Shamila McConnell, Shalim, Shamilia Connell, Afi Fletcher, Cherry Ann Fraser, Shabika Gajnabi, Janila Glasgow, Chanel Hendry, Janabi Joseph, Ashmini Munisar, Karishma Ramharak, Stefani Taylor, Rashida Williams, and Zayda James. That's the West Indies squad that will tour Australia for the six white ball matches. And um, uh, you were monitoring very closely, Mara, the new coach, and what he had to say in the press conference today. There were several questions hurled at him. Um, how did you think he did? And what are your thoughts of him as a new coach? Okay, so as the new coach, I think, one, we can't judge him very, very hard because he's new, one, to the Caribbean, you know. He, he still hasn't gotten the opportunity to meet all the women because I spoke to a couple of the players to find out if they've met coaches yet. So I think coaches, of course, speaking from a standpoint of looking on at the ladies, the couple of matches he would have seen during the CPL. So for now, coach gets a free pass for me because I will not be, you know, saying anything that, you know, I can't judge him right now. We have to give him the opportunity to go to that tour of Australia with the Windies woman and see what he has. Listening from today's press conference, he spoke a lot about a program that he has to offer the woman. He kept saying, you know, he hopes that the program that he's brought to the Caribbean will suit them and, of course, benefit them. So for me, I'm looking forward to see um, how that program works. And, of course, I will be chatting with the ladies one-on-one -on -one to hear if, you know, one, they agree with what he has to say to them, uh, one, if they feel comfortable, if they feel as if they're improving, all these different things. So I know the ladies are excited. Um, it's a new experience for them. It's a new thing that they're getting involved in. But it's too early to make a decision on coach. Ricardo, your thoughts on his comments about uh, he wants the women to play the natural West Indies style and Calypso cricket? Because I'm not sure if the, well, the West Indies team of the 70s and 80s were Calypso cricketers based on how they were seen because of how flashy and flamboyant they were. But I'm not sure if that's the culture of the women's game from the West Indies. I mean, there are a few <laughs> players like Deandra Dottin and so on who will yeah. knock the ball all over the place, but... Generally speaking, I'm not sure if West Indies women's cricketers could be um, accurately described as Calypso cricketers. Well, I think there are a few players in the team when you look at the batting side. Hayley Matthews is clearly genuinely a world-class player. Yes. Um, and she does have the ability to play that Calypso style like cricket. There is Chanel Henry, who the coach pointed to as well, who has shown signs of becoming a genuine all-rounder. Um, and there are youngsters coming through the system. But for me, I think it's about finding a balance. I sort of understood what the coach was saying um, because I think the... the, the type of cricket that he wants to see is positive cricket and I think he wants to get that into the the, the, the girls as, as early as possible in the process um, and, and I say process um, because I think that is exactly what it is. There is a World Cup that comes up in October, November next year, the 2024 T20 World Cup. And for me, it's about gradually building up to that tournament. Remember, the, the West Indies women didn't get out of the first round of the last two T20 World Cups. We got to the semi-final of the last 50 over World Cup, but um, we were soundly beaten in that semi-final against Australia. So it's about 
improving on the small things and gradually building up to the next T20 World Cup so we can be extremely competitive when we get there. I don't expect miracles and for the West Indies women to turn up and win next year's T20 World Cup. I think this process is going to take much longer than one year or even two years to get us where we want to be. But at this stage, it's about building blocks. It's about improving on the small things, Lance and Mariah, the fielding that I thought was poor at the last T20 World Cup, the running between the wicket, which I thought was poor again during the last T20 World Cup. And those small things we have to improve. And I think those things alone, if we improve on them, will make this team more competitive. And then you can look for the bigger improvements over a longer period of time. What I like about coaches is that he's not familiar to the ladies yeah. in the sense that, you know, sometimes as players or as people, we know who we can push to what limit. So let's just say, uh, you know, Lance is my coach and I'm really good with him. I'm excited for Lance to come to be my coach um, for a team because I know what to expect. I know Lance really well, so I know what I can get away with and what I can't. What I think Shane Dietz brings into this setup is a bit of uncertainty. <laughs> it's as if you now have to prove yourself again to coach. I think he comes across based, and I've been speaking to players that has worked with him. You know, there were a couple of ladies that were in the CPL setup. I asked about coach. They worked with him in the Big Bash League and what not and they said that he's a no-nonsense person and I think that's exactly what our ladies need you know coach has been involved at the highest level when I speak about uh, coaching in Australia I think that's what our ladies need yeah and I asked him a question today at the press conference about gaining the trust and the respect of the players because I think that is important so you can be no-nonsense um, but if the respect is not there, then the ladies may not respond to that. And it's important that whatever he brings to the table, that the ladies are responding to it because that's how you're going to get the improvement over time. Because if for any reason, um, you're not getting that positive response from the ladies, then chances are it is likely to go downhill. Um, and so it's important that he will gain that respect and the trust of the players as quickly as possible because I think that will help the process going mm. forward. Um, I hear you at this stage, Mariah. I'm not sure I like anything about him, but he has a clean slate from which to work yeah. and make this West Indies women's team better. Yeah, and he's coming from a situation where he has worked with the teams that are not elite internationally, yes. um, the Netherlands and, and Bangladesh. And he was actually CEO of the Vanuatu Cricket Association, which is a country in the South Pacific Ocean, um, underdeveloped as far as cricket is concerned. So he was CEO of the, of the entire cricket thing. So he, he, his administrative background um, says something about you know his ability to organize and and to build yes and i think that is the the key word building because the west indies women's cricket team need to rebuild yes they were a much stronger team five years ago than they are now yes and a lot of the players are there the same players so um he has he has work to do but i think he has the tools and i think the players um i would hope that they would respond to his coaching style and play play cricket to their highest potential because there are players who are underperforming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I will say is from what we saw from the CPL, I was really happy to see Stefani Taylor back. You know, she has been dealing with her injury issues uh, previously. Of course, Haley Matthews was really good. We saw a couple of names that really stood out during the CPL, so I hope that they can convert those performances into West Indies cricket now and well, coach can work with them to, of course, get the best out of them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, cricket fans from around the region, we have an exciting announcement to make today. Our CPL stream to win promotion on the Sportsmax app has come to a thrilling conclusion. And we're about to reveal the lucky winner of a trip for two to the CPL final in Guyana. The lucky cricket enthusiast who will be flying to Guyana for the CPL final is... Dorika Garwood from Jamaica. Yes, you heard it right, Dorika Garwood. You are the winner of this amazing trip for two to the CPL final in Guyana. Of course, a hearty congratulations from our Sportsmax team, and we will be reaching out to you shortly with all the details about your trip, including 
travel arrangements and accommodations so you can get ready for an unforgettable cricket experience. Wow, can I come too? Can I be your plus one? Big time. <laughs>